we're trucking. No, not really. <laughs> I'm in the full electric Nissan Townstar. Welcome to the second video featuring this vehicle. I'm taking it out for a real world driving test. And I mean it. I've loaded up the back with 300 kilos of payload, to be exact, 300 kilos worth of soap. So it is smelling nice in here. I'm going to do my usual 40 kilometer trip around Malta, and then we're going to check the real world driving figures of this commercial vehicle loaded up, which is, let's be honest, how it's going to be in the real world. We're of course going to be telling you more about the region and other features in this vehicle. I'm Luke and welcome to another episode of The Future is Electric. Now the Nissan Townstar is a new vehicle in the Nissan lineup. It actually replaces the outgoing NV200 and it does so in spectacular fashion because this vehicle increases the range over that uh, NV200 by 45%. So it's quite a significant jump here. The underlying platform is shared and co-developed with the Renault Kangoo and also the Mercedes E Saiten. So those three brands joined forces here to develop this passenger electric van. Now, in terms of sizes, it comes in two sizes. I am driving the smaller L1 version today, which is 4.5 meters in length. You can get a larger version, which is 4.9 meters in length. In terms of towing capacity, both variants can tow up to 1.5 tons. That's pretty impressive for an electric vehicle. Remember, we are carrying a heavy 45 kilowatt usable battery beneath essentially the cargo bay back there. Now, in terms of the storage capacity, so the smaller L1 inside the cargo bay has 3.3 cubic meters of space, the larger version 4.3 cubic meters of space. You can also put a hundred kilos on the roof and you can also get um, essentially eight, 600 kilos worth of payload in the cargo bay or 800 kilos worth of payload, payload in the cargo bay for the larger variant. Let me tell you about the cargo space in the back. So we already discussed the different sizes between the different lengths of vehicle available. Now, even in the smaller variant, you can actually fit two Euro pallets in there. In the larger variant, you can actually fit a Euro pallet through the side sliding doors as well. The opening is big enough for that. Again, the variant I'm in has side sliding doors on both sides. At the back, we have a, a two door split 60 40 opening door where the doors can both be extended beyond the 90 degree point to get fully open doors. There is an LED light back there to help you if you're loading say at night and there's plenty of tie down clips as well as well as a cigarette lighter should you wish to charge any electronics on your journey. What I am missing is a standard three pin plug which we have seen from other brands which I'd say is moving forward is going to be the norm here so I am missing that in this vehicle. To be fair though, the charging options here in the front are plentiful. There's a USB socket right here in the center uh, screen, the infotainment screen. And also down here on this compartment above the steering wheel, there's another two hidden USB sockets. And those are the three which I found. There might be others which are hidden away as well. So it's plenty of places to charge your iPads and mobile phones, etc in this vehicle. So a bit about the driving experience here. Of course, the first thing you'll notice when you sit inside this Townstar is the driving position. Now, it's definitely not low down. This is a van after all. However, I also wouldn't describe it as being too high up. I have driven some 
family SUVs on the channel where the driving position is definitely a lot higher by default. Now the visibility through the front and through the sides is brilliant. These glass panels here, I'm not sure if you can see them in the video, um, do help as well. Big mirrors, right? Some big mirrors on the side which do help you get a view around the van. Of course, there's no central mirror here because of the cargo bay, so big mirrors are important. What also helps with the lack of visibility through the middle and the fact there's of course no side windows if you look this way is the blind spot detectors which are those little LED lights in uh, both sides of the mirror which light up whenever something is in your blind spot and if the if the vehicle senses because you're using the indicator that you're going to turn onto something on which is in your blind spot it will start to flash the light a small complaint though i have here as i've been driving the vehicle and we have seen this feature in a lot of vehicles on the channel so i do i can compare quite a bit i found that at once that led starts flashing because someone is beside you there is a bit of a delay till it turns off so i did have situations where i did have someone in my blind spot i was indicating i feel them and i see them passing me and yet the light is still going which then makes you doubt is someone still there say on a motorcycle or something so there's a bit of delay um, especially in the multi streets here um, which are nice and small and narrow till when it turns off now to also compensate for the fact that we do not have a mirror seeing the back there is a rear view facing camera which turns on once the reverse gear is initiated again i would have expected a bit better here i wouldn't say it's bad but i have seen a lot better even from the sun themselves when it comes to the rear view mirror and for a vehicle where you literally cannot see out of the back i would have spent a bit more budget on getting a better camera installed now for the impressive thing and this is genuinely very very impressive i have been driving this vehicle all day this morning it was empty right the cargo bay was empty however then just before going off on this driving video we loaded it up with 300 kilos um, worth of soap essentially and the beautiful thing here and this is where the electric motor and electric powertrain really shines i genuinely cannot feel a difference even with the air conditioning running and everything in regards to the throttle response of the vehicle so driving it this morning when it was completely empty and driving it now with 300 extra kilos of weight in the back i have not felt any difference in the driving experience when it comes to the way the vehicle accelerates and performs which is a fantastic thing to see whether that will change if you say at 600 kilos which is the max of this l1 version i don't know but it doesn't feel like it's going to affect it a lot of course that's because of the incredible torque we get out of the electric motor now another important consideration for a commercial vehicle is the warranty period and here Nissan offer a five-year full warranty on the vehicle which is class leading now that's besides the eight-year warranty on the high voltage battery and again this is a warranty of eight years it does not mean in any way you're going to need to replace the battery pack in eight years or before the warranty covers you up until eight years just go ahead and ask those 12 year old nissan leaf owners if they've had to need to replace their battery packs the answer is a big fat no now i have hit some traffic here which makes it a perfect way to explain the region options in this vehicle because let me tell you as a delivery driver who's going to be driving around six eight hours a day you are going to love the region experience in this vehicle so from the gear selector here which is looks very traditional looking right you can actually shift it into the b mode that's your braking or region mode by essentially going all the way down into drive mode and then toggling to the right once you've toggled to the right we have engaged the region now there are three options to choose from which you get by toggling the shifter up and down 
your B1 mode is essentially the weakest of the modes, which means the vehicle coasts as you are used to with any internal combustion vehicle, which I recommend you use if you are on open roads where you're not in traffic, essentially. You want to make the most use of coasting. However, if you are in traffic, which let's be honest, is gonna be most of the time here in Malta, then you are going to want to use the regen mode. So what is regen mode? So regen is the electric vehicle's ability to essentially take the energy from a van which or a car which is already moving and rather than wasting it as is done an internal combustion vehicle by converting that energy to heat in the brakes, the electric vehicle can take that momentum and store the energy back in the battery, essentially recharging it. That's the engineering side. But from the practical side, what it actually means is that for you as the driver, you can operate the vehicle just by using the accelerator pedal. And the brake pedal is actually used only in, say, emergency braking situations. So I have it in the B mode. I am going to shift it to the B3, which is its strongest mode. And as I lift off the accelerator, the vehicle will start to slow down. So it's an excellent driving experience again especially for someone who's going to be driving day after day after day for long hours especially in traffic now it isn't the one pedal driving mode we've seen in the nissan leaf however the region is i would say strong enough here that it's enough that you can slow down the van without having to use the brake pedal in most situations i've completed the 45 kilometer in this case round trip with again the van being fully loaded I found this parking bay where I'm gonna park the van I'll tell you a bit about the interior before I move on to give you those range figures which I think um, are very important especially if you're considering an electric vehicle on your fleet knowing exactly the real world driving range is very important I'm just taking a photo of the um, efficiency rating because that might change while I am parked here with the van still on but I've taken it before I start talking so a bit about the interior so this is the three seat setup or two and a half I like to call it the bench seats right there is a two seater version and uh, in this case we get the little seat in the front as well um, steering wheel nice and big it's okay, I wouldn't say it is as fluid as some of the other cars we've seen on the channel, but again, this is a van after all. There is plenty of storage space, right? There's storage space up here um, in front of the steering wheel, essentially. Over here, you can definitely store a lot of stuff um, essentially in the roof above the mirrors. A nice compartment up here as well. Nice and big glove box as well. And the, the door bins here, pretty sizable. So great room in here to keep all your iPads and devices that delivery men are going to be using. Um, there's a place to store your phone over here. Um, and I think for me, the best part about this, um, you get a, a good infotainment system which does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto included. They are wired, so I had to plug it in. Um, if you want it to be wireless, you can buy a third-party wireless dongle, which I did for my car. Um, what I like about the wireless system, it's been a while since I've used a wired system, actually, is it just connects and works so flawlessly that in some of the wireless systems, doesn't always happen. So I connected, I got a prompt on the phone, ding, and there we go. Essentially, the apps in my phone are now over here in the center display. And I think this is important, right? Because so many times I'm expecting a delivery at home. And nowadays, what does the delivery man tell you? I'm on my way there. Can you send me a location using WhatsApp? Now, if a delivery driver is using a Nissan Townstar, which has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, the person is going to send the location and re receive it on the phone but then boom it's in the navigation of the car right away so i think that is an excellent feature 
the gear shifter nice and classic of course automatic right so you just put it into drive reverse or as i said you can engage the regen modes from here a nice big handbrake to remind us of the past but that's there nonetheless the the car does hold in in a hill once you press hard on the brake so you do not need to say lifting and putting down the handbrake in this version of the townstar i get a it's not a full digital display, which is available as an option, uh, but you get the more classic dials and it's basically a speedometer on the right and a, a power, which basically shows how much power you're using from the car slash how much you're charging the battery. There's a little screen in the middle, which you can toggle through the controls. And I've been watching the efficiency numbers over there in that central screen. And there is a, what looks like a fuel gauge but it's actually a battery level gauge as well over here overall i think it's all you expect there's physical dials for the air conditioning which i have had on all day and one for your fan speed one for your temperature and one for the direction but besides from that that's practically it you have a few buttons here and there hazard lights etc um now let me tell you about that real world driving range in my test, the air conditioning has been on 21 degrees medium fan throughout the entire test and throughout the entire day, to be fair, because it is a crazy 35 degrees Celsius, which is, um, we're in the middle of a heat wave, so it's, it's not good. Um, and it's, it's actually not great for an electric vehicle because an electric vehicle it uh, best case conditions is 25 degrees celsius and again that's the temperature they test the wltp rating at so we are um today's case actually not that great so that's going to work against the vehicle but how did the vehicle fare so before i loaded it up with 300 kilos worth of soap i took a little benchmark now to be fair that was just a 15 kilometer journey However, in that 15 kilometer journey, I got an efficiency rating of 13.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which is pretty damn good, which essentially would mean that this car in those conditions, this van, excuse me, would get 326 kilometers, essentially exceeding the WLTP value. And yes, that was with the air conditioning running. But of course, a more realistic example here would be essentially the uh, settings. I'm about to load the trip info for, for this journey here. Would be essentially loaded up because that's how a passenger van is going to be used day in, day out. Now, this van, the L1, takes 600 kilos of payload. I've loaded it with 300. And I've done a 45 kilometer journey around Malta again in the conditions I spoke about. And the efficiency after that trip, 15.9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which would result in a real world driving range of 283 kilometers, which again, I think is pretty it's actually, I think, excellent. I've always been impressed. I've driven now over 30 full electric vehicles in Mosa. This is the third vehicle from Nissan. We saw the Leaf, we saw the Aria, and now the Townstar. And the range and efficiency figures I've seen from Nissan have always been top of their class. You really start to see the advantage they have given they moved into electrification. They're one of the first brands essentially into the electrification world. So 283 kilometers with the AC running in a 35 degree heat wave with 300 kilos in the back. I think that's a pretty damn good result. So that just about wraps up the second video about the Nissan Townstar, the driving review. If you've missed that first video, I've done something a bit different there to my usual tech reviews because I've really gone into the finances of this vehicle. First video is actually being linked down below. I also talk about the insurance uh, figures and how they compare with the internal combustion variant servicing and a lot of very interesting stuff you'll be interested to learn about if you're a business owner or fleet manager so do check it out if you thought today's review was 
important to you make sure you smash that like button and share this video if you want to support the channel you can of course join as a youtube member and the merch store is available in the description below if you want to help spread the word big thanks to nissan malta for their support with today's video but as always i hope i've convinced you that the future is electric